What's up guys? In this video, I want to talk about a, a film that I recently shot that uh, totally took me by surprise. Uh, the results were interesting to say the least. So a few months ago, I did a film swap with Lou from Sweet Lou Photography. And along with the, uh, the swapped roles, uh, he threw in a roll of FPP's Retrochrome 400. And since my family was headed down to Delaware for a couple days to hit the beach, I thought, you know, I want to get some, some beachscapes with some slide film because, you know, Retrochrome is a slide film. Slide film has that, you know, the deep contrast and, and the nice saturated colors and uh, it just, yeah, it, it's just, it pops, right? No. Now, to be fair, I probably should have maybe looked up some information about uh, Retrochrome, you know, what it was, how it looked. And, and whatnot, but uh, I just kind of assumed, hey, slide film is slide film, let's go shoot some beachscapes, you know? And just a real quick note on packing for the trip, right? So I, I told myself, I'm going minimal this time, you know what I mean? I'm bringing nothing but like a, a Nikon EM and a 51.4, and that's it, I'm carrying light, okay? That was what I said to plan for the trip. And then look, like the day of the trip, okay, I'm running around, um, and this is actually what I brought to the trip. I got my scans back and it was just a real quick reminder from the first couple of shots on, you know, why slide film does not like over or under exposure at all. Uh, that first morning I was going out, first couple of shots, I wanted to get some sunrise pics. So I had the FPP Retrochrome loaded in my Nikon EM, uh, which is an aperture priority only uh, camera. Um, so it doesn't have manual controls for, for seconds. And after taking a light reading, I realized that the camera wasn't going to automatically expose long enough. So uh, it, it does have bold mode. So I pulled out a, a cable release, attached that, um, and then I just kind of, you know, held it in and I counted off. Well, I don't know whether, you know, my counting is off or the exposure on the uh, meter was off, but holy smokes, man, um, that is definitely not the right exposure. And I just happened to, to fire off a, a nice underexposed shot too. Uh, in the start of the roll, I really wasn't, you know, checking my uh, checking my settings, and I was just kind of, you know, winding and advancing. Uh, and this shot here, again, uh, shows underexposure. Not a good thing. But it's not all missed opportunity. One second, sorry. Hi, this is Susie calling with the vehicle service department. We sent you several notices in the mail that you have yet to extend your warranty past the factory cutoff. If you are interested in renewing your auto warranty now, please press 5 now or press 9 to be removed from our list. So in my flurry of overpacking, it, it kind of actually did myself a favor. Um, I brought another camera and I brought some Ultramax and Ektar and that provided me an opportunity to do some comparison shots. In this comparison shot between Retrochrome and Ektar, you know, you can see the obvious color differences, but, you know, in addition, there's also, you know, quite a bit of lifted blacks. The blues are shifted over to greens, creating more of like a aquamarine shade, and the reds become more of like a reddish brown. In other shots, like this flag, the deep blues of Ultramax become more of a, a turquoise on Retrochrome. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of all three films together on this shot of a beach access. So needless to say, you know, when I got my scans back from the lab, uh, I was pretty curious and, and kind of eager to, to maybe look up, you know, what the deal about this film was. And it turns out it, it's actually Ektachrome that was expired from 2004. The marketing copy reads, Retrochrome is a government surplus high-speed Ektachrome color positive film. Made specifically for industrial and government applications, Kodak adds, it's a color reversal film that is intended for photography under daylight illumination. So all the images that you've seen, you know, up till this point in the review um, have pretty much been just, you know, straight scans, uh, no edits, you know, no, nothing like that. But I found that, you know, popping this into Photoshop, I can actually get a little bit more pop if I adjust the black point 
on the image. It, it kind of still retains that, that look that Retrochrome has, but it kind of gives it a little bit more contrast and, and a little bit more pop, which I like. My final thoughts on Retrochrome are, would I shoot it again? Absolutely. Would I take it to the beach? Probably not. Um, I think this film could be pretty interesting or, or give really interesting images on scenes like, uh, you know, city scenes or landscapes, maybe that don't require a lot of contrast. Even portraits could look cool, you know, given the right lighting. I want to say thanks to Lou for sending me this role, and uh, I'll have his info and his channel and, and all that stuff in the description, so, you know, check him out if, if you don't already. Pretty much wraps that up for me. Uh, hope you guys are well, and uh, until the next one, we'll see you.